Welcome to Scarn, a land fraught with peril, adventure, and most of all, change. Around every corner lies a forgotten civilization. Behind every tale of adventure lies a journey fraught with temptation. Scratching the surface usually leads to breaking the veil between this era and the last. And those who look to fill in the edges of the map usually don't come back. This is a world where if one is willing, you can become famous and a hero or just as easily forgotten. A world where every gamble has the odds against you and the punishment is final, death. But the reward, your heart's desires. What would you do with endless opportunity and an adventurous spirit? We look to our players, heroes already in their own rights to see how they plan to continue their legend. I bid thee greetings, redeemed and divine races, Titan spawn and ancient ones. I am Patrick, known by the whispers on the sea breeze and in the hearts of dragons as Patty Shakes underscore, and I am the game master for this story. This is session seven of our continuing campaign, Draco Genesis Season 2, A Flight of Whimsy, taking place in Scarred Lands, a setting published by Onyx Path Publishing. This is an awesome adventure brought to you by Vorpal Tales. You can find Vorpal Tales on lots of places on the internet. Of course, we are on Twitch right here, right now. Consider giving us a follow or subscribe. Check out all of our social medias, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all at Vorpal Tales, where you can get updates about the cast and our goings-ons. A website, VorpalTales.com, where you can get links to our affiliates and see our up-to-date calendars. A Patreon and a Ko-Fi, where if you feel so inclined, you can toss a coin to us in order to make more better and Vorpal Tailier content. I would like to thank Onyx Path Publishing for making an incredible world and setting to use to amaze and delight. Also to Astral Tabletop for being our virtual tabletop where we can see the baddies who look to waylay our heroes and get that sweet, sweet ambiance. Speaking of ambiance, a thank you goes to Vinsvet, a wonderful YouTube channel that has amazing music to set your adventure to. Additionally, Vorpal Tales has some fantastic sponsors we'd love to tell you all about. First is QEmpire.com, a small company making original dice and products for your favorite RPGs and card games. Use code Vorpal Tales for 10% off. Next is Hit Point Press, known for their various reference cards, but also for creating the Humblewood and Hecna campaign settings. Visit VorpalTales.com, click on our affiliate link, and anything you purchase, a portion of it will benefit the show. Oh, hey, guess what? We share something coming with Critical Role now because Hit Point Press sponsors us and Critical Role. So, like, we're basically as good as Critical Role is what, is what I get from that. Uh, we also have Jim Hammer and Sons, an RPG supplement store that has everything from Dex of Wonder to Dex of Illusion to Dice. Once again, use our discount code Vorpal Tales for 10% off. They're also currently running a Kickstarter called Rolox Guide to Violence, uh, which is an awesome Kickstarter. I've backed it. You should back it. Everyone here should back it. They've already funded it, and they're like 10 stretch goals deep. So donate today and be part of that awesomeness. Also, as part of the hype for that, they are doing a Tournament of Champions, which Vorpal Tales is one of the teams in that Tournament of Champions. Uh, stay tuned. It's sh Shortly, they'll be releasing the episode that Vorpal Tales is featured in uh, as we combat a different RPG group. And last but not least, something new and fresh and exciting, because I like to keep you on your toes, everyone, today. Uh, our last sponsor is Dungeon Crate. Ooh, ah, ooh, Dungeon Crate. They are a monthly subscription service that allows you to get a wonderful box just like this one. Ooh, ah, ooh, monthly to your castle doors that is filled with wonderful things, such as, we're going to find out as I unbox this, <clears throat> a wonderful card that tells you everything that comes in your dungeon crate. Uh, this month has a giant D20, which I'm going to use tonight to murder all of you. Kill me. Uh, oh, this came with two minis. One, a, a they're bones minis, so you know the high quality shit right there. A bat swarm for Halloween, and a bone Sylvanian, which is like a he looks like a little werewolf dude. Dope. You take uh... those. You take those? Uh, then I also have two new D6s. They are dice. They're bone dice. Yeah. Made okay, from that's bones. Right? What kind of bones? What haunting it, are you going to get? Not the uh, bones, usually. It doesn't say, so I'm hoping human. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed on that. Hopefully one. it won't be a bad <laughs> scenario. 
can we mute Ambrose, please? Can I, can I get a mute on Ambrose? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then I got this dope-ass coin. It's like a crescent moon gold coin. It's got like some awesome trees on it with some stars. What is it? Uh, Rivendell golden moon. Oh, this crescent moon coin comes from the Rivendell during the rule of Elrond. It's in a, like a Lord of the Rings coin made by Shire Post Mint. They're from the USA and they make these by hand. That's pretty cool. Wow. Sweet. So, Patty, if that goes missing when I come to visit you, it wasn't me. Joke's on you. You have no idea where I hide things in this house. Uh, the thermal lamp rows. Two, uh, <laughs> two monster cards that I can waylay you guys at some point with. Uh, one is a honeyed ooze, which is this yellow guy right here, and then a skitter. Does that say, did you say a honey ooze? Honeyed ooze, yes. I don't like that. Uh, so it comes with pictures that you can show the players, and then the stats are on the back. Man, fighting that would be a real sticky situation. God <laughs> damn it. Uh, and then it comes with that a... That one was a really sweet joke. Then it comes with a... Uh, a a uh, like one shot pamphlet. Uh, this one is called Cult Classics Three, which is a level three to five encounter, and it's got the full encounter with detailed information and maps and all the things like that. Uh, I think I think that's it actually, which is you know a lot. And then it comes with a uh, a, a code to get some metal dice if I would like. Uh, so yeah, uh, you can go to DungeonCrate.com. You can sign up for a new subscription, which you totally should after you've seen all the dopeness I just got here. Uh, and if you use code VORPALTALESDC, all capital letters, at checkout, you'll get $5 off. So, I mean, you should totally do it. Get get in on the swag. And uh, these boxes come once a month, and uh, we'll do this every month when, my, when the box comes in for Vorpal Tales. So uh, I hope you liked what you saw. And uh, you should t totally go think and sign up with Dungeon Crate because of that. Okay, that's all the business out of the way. Let's get to the fun. Let's meet our intrepid adventurers who look to sail, slay, search, seduce, and shift the very core of Scarn. Please state your name, where people can find you on the internet, and who you'll be playing tonight. Oh no, who's hey, first? Is it my, uh, am Steve. I first? Yep. Oh, it is Steve, John, Birdie. John, Birdie, Akims, and Ambrose, and Adele. Yeah, I see it now. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. My pronouns are he, him, and tonight I am playing Le Malthoon, the Drindali Elf Fizzard. And that brings to me the wonderful, the charismatic, the Devok tonight. And me, myself, and I are going to be John, otherwise known as J3 Billion. So, uh... Let's have some fun. Well, I don't know about character charisma, but I've got tons. My name is Beatrice. Friends, you can call me Birdie. I use she, her pronouns. I cause a lot of trouble on purpose, and everyone loves me. They don't love uh, Seeker Pajat, my character. A cat that definitely isn't a warlock. Hi friends, my name is Keems. You can find me on the interwebs at It's Me Keems. Uh, tonight I will be playing Sayana, the Hollow Legionnaire, um, who is a death cleric for Vangal, who may or may not, maybe definitely not, be a blood god. Wait, what? <laughs> what? What? What happened? Said, now? said may not. I'm pretty sure it's no. Answers it's just well known. known. Totally safe. Totally yeah, safe. You're a cultist, no. my friend. You're reading into it too much. Let's just move on. Play it that, cool, you guys. Play it cool. Oh, goodness. Hey, everybody. I'm Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they. Whatever pops into your head at the moment. You can find me on the internet as Am Changeling, because in me, Am Changeling. And tonight I shall be playing Yine, whose pronouns are they, them. And they totally are not a. Bill Smith fan person. Not at all. That's acceptable. That that's just expected now. Like you have you can't be in the group if you're not a Bell Bell Smith fan. Well it's God, okay. where nope, are we nope. going to go? Well, by the little soon. It's okay. Nobody likes the hag anyway. 
especially not me, Gar, also Devin, and Sword of Sullied Online, and you can... Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, that's the right direction. Uh, <laughs> and you can find uh, me being the uh, Oath of Redemption Paladin that totally, totally is not okay with that Bellsmith shady, shady person, god thing. I don't know about, uh, wh what was yours, Keems? Cyana definitely likes Belzameth, if that's the question. No, 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 you're, you're, you're totally not Blood God. Oh, totally, definitely not Vangal. Everybody knows that Vangal is a Blood God. Vangal yeah. wants you to know this. Oh, wait, Honestly. I thought Cyana said that she, she, they, wait, what are Cyana's pronouns? Oh, she or her. Okay. Uh, I thought that Sayana was saying that she was the blood god, and I was like, wait. What? <laughs> that would be a surprising development. Yes. But no, uh, yeah, totally I'm like you're totally like Van Gaal more than I like Bell Smith right now. Okay. Uh, I think that's it, everyone, right? Sorry, I was doing something else while you guys were introducing yourself. Alrighty. Well, thank you for your introductions. Now, we shall have the indomitable Lamalthoon give us a summary of events. A summary of events, please. Okay, let's see if I can get through this. I believe in you. Hold on. I believe in you. Oh, my lord. Do you believe in Lamalthoon? Probably not. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> When last we left our adventurers, we traveled to the semi-free city of Rahak. The navigator is a curious sort, and soon we found out why. His skills led him to navigate more than just the material planes of mortals and gods. Our ships are to seek the Drifting Isle. But our voyage will then take us even further beyond, using the magical land to send our voyage to other worlds. But first, we must meet our peers, name our boat, and then learn our challenges that we are to face. We end up naming it... Ooh. Ili Tarina Limna? Close enough. Close enough. It means boat of the water. There are five other groups, as we learned, and the navigator wasn't exaggerating when he said we weren't the strangest he'd seen. Legionnaires, the King's Own Black Dragoons, a sect of silent wind monks, Acadia, and the odd company she keeps. Oh, and some Knights of Corian. Three groups of trained, organized fighters, one group of misfit thieves, and us, the heroes of Elysian, and friends. Acadia makes a great effort to passively, ag to passive aggressively haze us, and nobody is having it. She meets the rest of the group, and we follow. But we walk cool. We strike the baddest pose on the way over, with sun and salt spray behind us. The navigator brings us together to say, to say again, we leave in the morning. There will be no killing. There will be no competition. So be it. We set about our ships and prepare for the journey. That night, Devok pays a visit to Sayana to ask about Vangul and the goddess of the sea. Manawi. Gar voices a prayer to in Blech. to Enkili for good winds and safe travel, and then Madriel, interrupted by a knock at the door. Pazat entrusts him with a magic item and a word in confidence. Gar can now breathe underwater and ensure that others do the same. Nobody dies. They said and left. Bazat returns to their room and sets about warding their door. Devok, before bed, voices a prayer to Enkili, and then Monoway. In another cabin in the dead of night, Yine is given a blessing. 
the Lady Bellasimeth appears and grants a boon of her own. Their discomfort wiped away, their inner self made external. Her favorite mortal had been made a work of art by the lady's hand, body sculpted anew. After she departs, Brazat hears a knock on their door. They do not open it. But Sayana opens hers. Bellsmith offers the bloodshed she seeks, and the Legionnaire doesn't have to do a thing other than continue on this path. But none of us know what she's planning. The morning comes, we gather again, the ships are setting sail, and we are on our way. As we discuss faith around breakfast, a question arises. Why is Gar so hostile toward Belsameth? She didn't let him keep the beer, of course. Devok laughs his way up the deck and sends a little prayer saying, Well done to Belsameth. And then we're briefed on the details of our adventure. We are seeking the Drifting Isles, yes, but our method is going to be bringing the Isle to us. It is under the domain of an Aboleth, who sends its Kraken minion to viciously defend the Isle. The Navigator believes if we are to kill the Kraken, we will enrage the Aboleth, and it will bring the island to us. Then we reclaim the island for the Uragast, a star spawn of the ancient gods. Through it, we open a gate to the Dragonlands. And so we're off to the Dragonlands. The only thing standing in our way is the open water. A mystery island. A mind-controlled kraken. An aboleth. A dimensional portal. Five other rival teams that we have no reason to trust. And the ever-present worry that Belsimus favor will run dry along the way. At least we now know why our game is titled Draco Genesis Season 2 A Flight of Whimsy. Thank you very much. Once again, words by Bertie, spoken by Steve. Both of you may have an inspiration to start, start the game with. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> you were given the details of your journey, the end goal of your journey, and what lays in between the two. <clears throat> A week of sailing goes by with little to nothing of adventure variety or importance going by but that week does give plenty of time for the crews of the ships to interact with one another the days are spent separate each ship to their own looking hoping for the briefest sign of the island miraculously or more likely, minions of the island. <clears throat> it is after this week of sailing that at night, as of every night, the ships come together and form one large vessel, loosely kept together with ropes and gangplanks so as to deter any large predators of the sea. The mood has finally set in that this is not going to be a quick, fun adventure where there might be some battles along the way, some magic found, some treasure won, and back home again with glory and riches to your name. And this affects each crew differently. The Black Dragoons hardened expert warrior, sol warrior soldiers of King Verduk are the first to loosen up. The first to 
settle in with what they have deemed a wild goose chase. For the first week, they were they, they engaged with others, they ate, they drank, they went back to the cabins and slept. But now, they get drunk, they get rowdy, and a few of them are getting starting to get seasick. The Legionnaire crew is mostly unchanged. It seems that uh, their devotion to their god has kept them in line. And there seems to be no difference in their attitude or how they interact with everyone since the first day you set sail. Same with the Windwalkers. They uh, have mainly kept themselves and been very antisocial the entire time. They had come to the group dinner that happens every night and then immediately get up, clear their plates, and go back to their ship to sleep for the night. The two loudest groups are yours and the, the uh, band of mercenaries that none of you had recognized. They get rowdy. They challenge everyone to, back to games of gambling, friendly fights, and other competitions of skill and luck. It is all friendly above board. Not trying to get ta hurt anyone, but they uh, are definitely starting to feel the monotony of long days at sea, seeing nothing but blue water, uh -huh. and the same faces every night. Ah, uh, yes. Just some friendly boat wrestling. The most annoying group, well, half of the group, is Acadia's. Every night she boasts of some new arcane discovery she has found that she was able to divine during the day. The bugbear and goblin with her, pork and beans, are all over all over the place. <coughs> They're fucking what? <laughs> Their names are pork and beans. And God. the the owl bear knight that rounds out her party introduces himself as Sir Vero. Mostly he reads and is quite open to discussions with your group and he actually seems to like most of you for the most part. He engages in several intelligent and well thought out conversations. Uh, and most of you think it's just a shame that he's fallen in with someone like her, uh, Acadia and wonder why he actually travels with her. Can we can we ask? So this would be week plus well, let's see, you did three days. This would be almost two weeks now have gone by total since you have boarded the ship for the first time. It is another boring day that has faded away, the sun has set. The ships come together, and the usual nightly meal is laid out in front of all of you. Five tables are scrunched together in the uh, mess hall of, of the uh, navigator ship, where you all meet, and you are partaking of dinner. I I have a question before we get into sure. the scene. Because you've talked sure. about the ships coming together a couple of times, but I'm very curious. When you say the ships come together, do they just sail close and like tether or is this yes. like a Voltron boat situation <laughs> no, no it's not it unfortunately is not like it's not a Voltron situation uh, it's not an, okay. uh, what is, what's the other one Animorph situation it's okay. not uh, okay hold on because you, you you told me outside of game that we're not getting an airship yet correct so you told me that you had something cool planned so when you said mm -hmm. five ships come together I made cool a pro plan. I, I made a promise guests. to myself that it was going to be a Voltron situation, and I feel you need to live up to that expectation that I did entirely myself, and you did not say. Well, viewers, this is a teachable <laughs> moment right here for when your players 
uh, get this idea in their head. And uh, when the DM doesn't fulfill the fantasy they have in their head, uh, you know what? You tell them in the most politest of t- tones, of course, you work with them, maybe even do it outside of game, but I'll do it here. So this can be a teachable moment for all our viewers. Uh, Steven, I-, I appreciate you bringing this to mm-hmm. my attention mm-hmm. that this mm-hmm. is what you wanted. Yes. Um, and I'm sorry that mm-hmm. that's not what it is. Okay. But um, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Ooh, I thought you were like maybe leading into a trust me, you know, it's it's my intention no, to make no, this fun for no, no. everybody. This this is my story. You're fucking actors <laughs> deal with it. I um oh, take I have your a leg fantasy. Of Voltron. I have <laughs> stick it up for <laughs> uh, I have I... a fantasy I would like you to fulfill for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> Over those weeks of time, I, uh, I, probably starting on the first day after I realize how dull it's going to be, I would like to learn how to fish. Oh. That that was something over. Like I said, you're almost at two weeks since boarding the ship. Uh, that is something that, uh, like in real life, if you put just a couple days to the very to get the basics of fishing is something you could definitely do. Um, so by like, this point, as a, a as the quick study you are and the natural instincts that come to you, um, you have uh, fashioned a decent pole, uh, have uh, rigged up this system of uh, line lure, and then actually uh, long spear. One of the one of the long spears that uh, Lamalthun had found earlier. You use one of those to spear the fish at the end of your line, and then bring it up. I was thinking exactly that and getting Gar in on it and borrowing the trident to just lure a school of fish up. Because I I'm I'm a cat. I'm an I obligate was, carnivore. I was just sending to Patty in the side that it, if you're doing that, I'll be using my trident to just make you feel like you're a better fisherwoman than you are. I'll I take just that. without Yeah. Okay. It keeps yeah. me fed. I'm good. Yeah. I just don't tell you that I do that. Uh, yeah, so that is that all that can absolutely happen before this uh, scene that has been set up where it is dinner. We'll say this is literally the, the night of the end of the second week. Um, and uh, the demeanors of all the groups are as des- as described previously. Why, hello there. So are we all eating around like cafeteria style in the mess of yes. one of the ships <clears throat> yes yeah, so in the, the mess nav- or on the deck uh in the mess so the navigator ship uh as opposed to having all the extra crew uh spaces that your ships need is like a fairly large uh mess um where five tables are uh set up i'm sorry six tables are set up um and uh you all all, all the ships crews eat with each other uh, dinner. Since Hollow Legionnaires don't eat, what is the Hollow Legionnaire table doing? They kind of just they stay to themselves. Um, they alternate between you know some of them read holy texts of Corian, some of them shine their armor, buff their armor for you know the millionth time. It doesn't need it, but it's just something they're doing. Um, they're just doing kind of just generally what like. They did b- b- before this time has elapsed. The dra- what the dragoons and the legionnaires did were very similar, except that the dragoons would eat first, where they would you know sharpen their weapons, polish their armor, talk once more among- amongst one another about battle strategies and formations and things like that. Uh, but the dragoons have now slipped more into like razzing each other about their wives and husbands, um, talking about previous battles and conquests both physical and sexual um getting drunk some of them uh play like uh five finger fillet like it's uh they've gotten a little out of hand have i had to attach any fingers uh luckily no there have been some incidents where some a finger was stabbed but none have been cut off fully I feel like adjusting to not needing to sleep, I would probably start spending 
a good portion of the day over the the course of the week with Sayana. And then most of the night, you know, I, I would come in early with all the fish that I caught, you know, hand them over to the kitchen, have a little bit to myself, talk to the legionnaires for a while since they would be around and not eating. And then usually halfway through dinner, I would leave and I would go uh, stay somewhere above deck. You know, this is the time when all the ships are together. If there was mm -hmm. going to be mischief, it would be this time. Uh, and and therefore, I'm going to join the night crew in standing watch and the aiding however I can. And if nothing needs to be done, I will write in my journal and just keep eyes over everything. Yeah, the uh, respective kind of uh, uh, back, I'll call them background extras for each of the ships, <laughs> the, the sailors and uh, you know, the you know, the, the other kind of uh, captains of the other ships that all report back to the navigator. Um, they all kind of, um, like each of those crews is responsible for looking after their own boat, essentially. Um, so, you know, you, you could, they're, they're not going to stop you if you wanted to be up top deck with them and meeting. And even like if you're, you know, if you were wat posting watch, they'd be like, uh, seeker, uh, we absolutely can handle this, but it, we're not going to be bothering you if if you want us to. If you if you want to keep watch, it's your ship to do with what you wish. But uh, you know, we can handle this. I have full confidence in your capabilities. I am a philosopher, and the time alone, the ocean air helps me to write and to think. Well, uh, if the last couple of uh, months be. Uh, any indication, you'd be getting a plenty of the uh, the old crisp ocean air. Uh, but to each their own. I'll kind of just go back to, at night, it's more of just, uh, they're not trying to cover a lot of ground. So, you know, the, the sails are mostly uh, reeled in. Um, so it's just a lot of making sure none of the ropes uh, or uh, anything like that, or none of the sails have any holes, none of the ropes have started the fray. Mm -hmm. um, just general maintenance of the ships. Um, but yeah, so, it, it, yeah, but they just, they leave you alone for the most part. Cool. Uh, mostly just if there are other people that, that try to be alone or, you know, are headed places they shouldn't, I want to be able to have an eye on it. But if, say, the owl bear were to come up and want to talk about philosophy or studies or anything, I'm not uh, isolating myself. Sure. I could uh, post a lesson. Most of the time, uh, all the other crews are fairly eager to be below decks because um, it is the this mess is fairly nice. Um, so they're fairly eager to be out of the ocean air and be below deck. So very rarely do you get someone to come hang out with you. Um, you do notice kind of what the routine is, though, since you are kind of keeping an eye on things up here. Uh, is usually um, sunsets, the ships come together. Everyone comes in for dinner. Uh, the first group to leave is always uh, the Wind Walkers. Uh, they come up. You always see them walk by single file. They all always nod at you and go straight back to their ship. Um, and they don't really seem to want to mingle with other people. Not in a rude way, just, you know, they have all taken vows of silence and none of them want to you know, just hang around and not be able to contribute. Mm -hmm. um, then usually the next group to leave, usually the next person to leave is Acadia. Uh, and she usually switches back and forth between saying something very flirtatious as she leaves to go back to her ship uh, or ignoring you completely, whichever she feels like doing. Um, mm -hmm. Then usually uh, sometime after that, uh, her uh, Albert companion is usually dragging and or carrying pork and beans back to their ship. Um, then pork it's- Pork and fucking beans. <laughs> then it's uh, the Legionnaires uh, will go back to their ship. Uh, much later after that, the Dragoons will go back to their ship. Most of them usually drunk, several of them you know, throwing up on each other, either from being drunk or the seasickness. Um, and they are usually singing uh, the Celestian Hegemony's uh, anthem as they walk back to their ship. Uh, then it's a tie between your group and the mercenaries. 
uh, getting up, going back to uh, respective ships uh, based on just whether or not there was any friendly competitions given, if an argument broke out, if a lively debate broke out, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Hmm. Um, you can give me um, give me three perception checks that you have done over the last two weeks. Gladly. One second. Three, you said? Yes. Uh, I got a an 11, a 9, and then a natural 20. Okay. Uh, the knights, the knights covered by the 11 and the 9. You don't notice anything out of the ordinary. The schedule seems to be formed up and kind of kept to and nothing like that. Uh, the knight, uh, the natural 20. You notice that the wind picks up a little bit more. And this is, this would have been maybe two nights ago or so. Uh, and you would have gotten a, a feel for how the, uh, um, wind in this part of the sea works and an unusual breeze picks up um, and you see one of the uh, wind walkers is kind of almost at sea level is just kind of flying around the perimeter of the ships and you you kind of you kind of like felt the breeze on the back of your neck kind of prickled a little bit and you look happened to look over right as they were circling underneath hmm. and you kind of lock you lock eyes and just look at you very kind of passive blank stare over the course of the dinners would i have had time to pick up uh because i'm i'm a whole anthropologist is my background mm -hmm. um and if I spend time observing people, I have a feature that lets me learn how to do rudimentary communication. Could I have picked up on some of their signs? Uh, you know what? Uh, we'll say yes. You'll have to make rolls if you want to communicate with them. Sure. Um, but uh, they'll be a lower DC because of that feat. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to say something to them right now. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to roll... And I'm... I'm, I'm I'm assuming charisma or intelligence, something like that. Uh, trying to think. Uh, do you do you have uh, proficiency in history? I do have proficiency in history. We'll, we'll make we'll make it a history check to kind of okay. go as like a lore kind of uh, knowledge check. I basically just want to communicate. Uh, is everything okay? Are you okay? Okay. I don't have reason to really distrust these people, even if I don't perfectly trust them. Sure. So that would be plus a uh, total of 21. 21. So you definitely get your message across and you know you get it off clearly. Um, and they just kind of sign back uh, that, yeah, everything's fine. Just it's the, the literal language is just going for a walk. Can I... Uh attempt to ask if I may join them. Sure. Uh, we'll say this, we'll say this conversation can be fueled by that uh, one role. Uh, as you okay. ask them that, they kind of tilt their head for a second, and they're clearly thinking about it, and they're just like, they uh, sign to you uh, with the emotion, uh, inter interlacing the emotion of uh, regret that, no, unfortunately not. Uh, their, their skill is just for themselves. Very well. I suppose that's the then. You know, if they if they come by on further laps, may stop to to make small talk, but that's about it. Once uh once they convey that, they just kind of uh nod a sign back kind of a, a good night, uh, you know, good sleep, and then they beeline to their ship. Mm. 
as the other groups are coming out, does they look all identical or did they have any distinguishing features? The Windwalkers? Yeah. So the rest of them would have already gone. They would have already gone back to their ship. Yeah. Uh, but as far as the whole group goes, there's slight differences now that you've interacted more with them. Uh, but they all are very similarly uh, dressed and clothed and... Uh, like I said before, they all have uh, kind of either short shaven hair or completely bald, uh, as well as kind of no um, uh, kind of real defining like makeup or jewelry or anything like that. It's all very simple. Um, Generally so all... describe the person's face, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you can tell the differences and you've kind of gotten an idea of differences in faces. Um, but, you know, they're all kind of from the uh, same area. Um, and they all, like I said, there's not like a ton, it's not like they wear any makeup or anything like that. So it's in, they okay. usually have like high collared robes or some of them even wear hoods. If dinner's um, still going on. Sure, yeah, uh, it would be. I'm gonna swoop downstairs, you know, see see where the party's at, what folks are up to, who they're socializing with. And wherever Lamalthon is or wherever he would normally be, I'm going to, to just silently swoop over next to him. I assume probably sulking by himself to some degree. Um, Such a little thing. Um, where would you be? Well, I mean, in a two. Okay, like, um, for this scene, we can say that I'm just sulking on deck. It's perfectly fine. Whatever works. Huh. I'm going to to swoop up to you, ask to speak to you alone, and then I'm going to detail what I just saw how to identify that person. And I'm going to say, I want you to find out why they went out. Why the sudden change in behavior? Why do it out of line of sight? They were around the outer and lower side of the ship at the water line, using their abilities to wind walk. Investigate however you see fit. Just so I understand, you want me to investigate wind walkers walking around the water line of the ship on the outside? One specific windwalker, they went back to their ship. You may find your first answers there. Hmm. Or look at the waterline if you please. The ships aren't all going to be bound together like this for more than another four hours. Let's see what I can do. And then, uh, how long does the benefit from my gauntlet last? Uh, we'll say uh, an hour. Then in that be, case, right they before have to use within an hour. Okay, right before Lamalthon leaves, I say, "Hold still. I will assist. This is going to be unpleasant." And then I'm going to take the Gorgon's paw, and I'm going to one, two, three, four, five, plink all the points of it into the skin of his shoulder and turn his blood to stone, giving you advantage on the next skill check you make. Oh my. You take five points of damage. Ow? <laughs> I said it would be unpleasant, but it is very effective. I see. Thank you. You? If you need me, make a signal. I will be where I can see it. And then I'm either going to go to a high part on the decks of the ship where I've got a good view of everything, or I'm going to find a crow's nest and look down. Uh, there's, absolutely, there. there's absolutely a crow's nest. I'm uh, hella going is, in the crow's nest. Since it is your ship, you guys are have unfettered access to any of the locations of your ship. Hmm. So just I'm going to spend... Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm just going to spend the next until the Malthoon gets back sitting in the crow's nest where nobody can see me and looking down at everything. Okay. Catting it up. Gotcha. Yes. I like to be tall. Yeah. 
um, real quick. Uh, so, Devok has been asking a lot of questions, and he he sees the monk and the monks, and they kind of want to be left alone. So he's, you know, he's he's very awkward. He tried to engage in conversation, but I feel like that has gone poorly. Yeah, you try if you try to verbally talk to them, they just kind of like smile, nod their head, and then they like you know they they try to sign a couple things to you, but if you don't pick up on them, just like yeah. after a couple attempts, they're just like mm -hmm, they nod their head and then yeah. they like you know either leave or turn back around or you know something. Yeah, and, and he, he catches on to that and he's like, okay, there's definitely a language barrier there and I'm not catching on to it shit okay cool that's awesome um, uh, but he's going to like he, he's gonna very pointedly after everyone else is asleep for at least a couple hours a night especially as it starts like dragging on to weeks and months um, he's going to go to uh, the back of the boat and just kind of like look, you know, make sure, like do do that thing where the the kid doesn't want to be caught, so he looks around, you know, and make sure the parents aren't there. And he's going to just uh, lay out his manticora pelt and kind of sit there cross-legged and just just meditate, do his best to calm himself and he's gonna do this pretty much like night after night okay there would actually be like a balcony on the back of the ship that you could access from below deck um, that you could go out on uh, that you no one would see you come up on top of the deck and you know kind of keep an eye on you you could you could get to that balcony from uh, below deck if you wanted to if you want kind of wanted to keep this you know low key yeah and he's not gonna he's not gonna like He's, he's going to try and keep it, like, low-key because, well, he's slightly embarrassed, but, um, like, he's not going to try and hide it either. Right, yeah. That's that's what I was kind of figuring. It's just, like, you're, it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, well, I'm going to bed. And then you, you just, like, get up and, like, end up, like, going out the, <laughs> the, 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 the porch. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, I'm going to bed. Okay, I'm going to go drink a beer on the porch. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Um, so, <coughs> um, so the monks were walking around the outside of our ship. Uh, one was, and it seemed like they had done a, a large circuit, uh, like, around okay. the ship. Okay. John, your baby is beatboxing. All right. Um, how the hell can I check the outside of the ship? Interesting. So they're walking around. One was walking around the outside of our ship because he's a windwalker. He can walk on air. Okay. Since you're figuring that out, uh, throughout this entire trip, uh, Gar would have been initially, since you said that the Windwalkers are the first ones to go, initially be chit chatting with the Windwalkers until you know they all left. Basically, waxing philosophical, trying to get, since they're quiet, uh, their opinions on Gar's own previous actions in the past, dealing with uh, him basically running away from his problems seeing how they think of things and then afterwards you said uh, that the bugbear was the one that seemed intelligent on the grouping uh, it's the, the owl the owl bear is the owl bear, okay. kind of full play armor that has the uh, spectacles and was do, did a lot of reading once the uh, 
every every night when the Windwalkers take off, he'll Gar will move on over to the Owl Bear and kind of just chit chat with him, get his backstory, kind of you know. He's uh, the most he, interesting of that crew. Uh, he almost seems to have a, a different book every night, uh, and they range wild, wildly from. Some of them are like kids, like fairy tales, to advanced battle tactics uh, of the Vesh Empire, to um, like crumbling pieces of um, parchment that are kind of been uh, glued together, clearly ancient, uh, on the pre civilizations before the Divine War. Just all kinds of things. Um, but whenever you come over, he would definitely kind of close or roll up or whatever it is he's working on, kind of. <clears throat> well, uh, uh, God, very, very, very good for you to join over and, and join me again. Uh, I must say, I love our conversations. It's been a pleasure. It's probably been the highlight of this. And, uh, <clears throat> what uh, philosophical quandary do you have for me tonight? Well, we've already spoken about uh, my previous issues. And now you've learned the reason why I'm so vehemently against taking another's life anymore. Uh, but an inter an well, um, I must, I must reiterate that uh, it is a very inter interesting pendulum that you swing, sir. Uh, there is, as a, uh, as a pendulum goes, there you go from one extreme <clears throat> to the other, and uh, you must find the uh, happy balance of your pendulum. Uh, that, <clears throat> that is just my opinion, of course. Well, it is a very wise opinion. I have just yet to find that uh, balance, the middleman, to say the least. The Don't be opinion. afraid in your search <clears throat> uh, to uh, swing back the other way a little bit. Uh, it is only natural uh, to continue the pendulum metaphor. <clears throat> well, hopefully that doesn't happen to that extent. I mean, I, as I told you, went a little too far. Of, well, maybe of course, a, but... Maybe uh, something along the ways might be able to give me a little, uh, hole to find that middle ground, as you said. Anyway, exactly, and, and you must remember that you are not any lesser of a person for, you know, uh, swinging the other way. Thank you so much for this. These conversations have really taken a load off of, well, what has been for many years a guilty conscience. Uh, of course, uh, it has been a delight to uh, <clears throat> learn about uh, someone as fascinating as yourself. It's, it's amazing what just talking about it does to someone. Yes, uh, you know, it has led me to think, <clears throat> uh, once I get out of the adventuring game, of course, <clears throat> that uh, I might start a, uh, a business where people could come, and maybe previous adventurers who have uh, similar issues as yourself could come and <clears throat> speak freely. I, I would gladly send many of my old compatriots your way as it's a, a bit of a problem for us. Yes, unfortunately it seems that uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the hegemony does not seem to provide uh, care for its soldiers after <clears throat> uh, things are done. So, yes, I'd be most interested in that. But uh, you seem to have a, a different line of questioning tonight. <clears throat> uh, what is it that uh, I can... I can uh, answer your questions about. I was thinking about taking it easy tonight. I was wondering if you'd like to try some of this. And I give him some of my ale. As it's been a couple weeks, now I'm kind of lightening up on this work. So you have to remember, this is a full owlbear, a large creature in this hunky, and he always wears his plate, full plate armor. Um... And like the chair he sits in is very dangerously creaking at all times, and he kind of just lifts up the tanker with his hand. That is, it looks comically small, and he kind of just and uh, ale, you say? Which is I in made it myself? This... Oh, okay. it is a it is a a work of your hands. It is indeed. He smells it again. He opens his beak and he lets a little bit of it kind of go into his mouth. And... 
<laughs> well, well, I must say, by gods, that, that is dangerous. That dangerous is what good. has kept me going. Oh, well, I can see why. Ah, uh, I, um, I, I, I hate to, uh, ask for more that is freely given, but, um, would you perhaps be able to, uh, provide some more? Certainly. How about we make a game out of it? And so Splendid. I just started I love drinking games. Game with him. Okay. Is it anything more complex than just, like, who can drink oh, no. the most? Once I brought up, once I brought up the beer, that was Gar just saying... Let's have some fun tonight. All right. You've helped. You've helped the load off of Gar's conscience. Now we can drink for fun. Uh, so that was the first time he's ever drank an ale, and you were getting him drunk for his first time. It takes quite a bit of your stores to get this large Albert drunk. Um, but you managed to do it. You managed to do it. And it's uh, the curious, most curious thing. As uh, the more and more drunk he gets. Uh, his cough seems to clear up a little bit than he constantly seems to do, but he seems to replace it with, um, well, well, God, I must, woo -hoo -hoo! I must say that, uh, I, I, I never thought that, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, that, uh, I would loosen the tongue and feel it as fat as it is in my mouth, or is my tongue very fat now? And he sticks out like this very long tongue. It feels very fat in my mouth. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, uh, well, I, uh, that, I think that's it, it for takes, the night. It takes a little getting used to after a couple of drinks. You start to, uh, uh, like you said, it starts to feel a little bit uh, unbecoming of your own size. Yeah, 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 yes, indeed. Well, uh, I, mu I, ooh, 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 uh, I must... I, I think I must be getting to bed. Uh, this has been probably the best night of my awakening. I, I bid you adieu, good sir. Woo -hoo -hoo! And you hear adieu him. Just, to uh, you too. Hear the steps creak as he goes the, goes up to the uh, deck of the boat, and as he sees the moon, you just hear the loudest woo hoo, woo -hoo! <laughs> and then the steps. You can hear the thundering steps. Uh, above you from the deck as he gets off the boat. Does the owlbear have a name? Uh, yes. Uh, the owlbear's name is Sir Vero. Sir Vero. Mm -hmm. Like, peer over the side of the crow's nest as he goes drunkenly hoo hooing his way around. <laughs> I'm not talking to him tonight. I'm staying <clears throat> up here. He uh, starts uh, actually singing. Oh, it's a whale of a tail and a tail of a whale. And as he descends down the into the crew quarters of his deck. And on that, Gar will go to sleep, too. <laughs> you sleep very well. I'm having bird emotions. I'm, I died. I fucking died. <laughs> It was a hoot. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to. <clears throat> Pretty oh. good. <laughs> I've got a question for God over there. Sure. Uh, would Yine have experienced anything like a ship in the Broadreach? I don't. Okay, that's what I thought. So, uh, <laughs> would you like me to roll constitution for seasickness? Uh, no, because it's not like anything has gotten super rough yet. The the seas the sea has been calm uh, these these two weeks. I mean, that's not to say that you know, especially the first couple of nights, there weren't there weren't a couple of nights where you woke up just kind of like, nope, nope, back 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 to sleep. Um, <laughs> but for the for the most part, everything has been above board. So, so I'll say um, that from time to time, if a wave catches the boat and catches Yune off guard, they will kind of like, instead of walking through it or slam into the 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 door or jam. Oh yeah, you do not have sea legs at all. Like the slightest rock of the boat sends you like tumbling. <laughs> Even though you are That's a very dexterous, hilarious. your character is very dexterous. 
you still are just not used to the sea. <laughs> oh, that is fucking hilarious. Uh, Sayana. Um, so, Sayana, over the past few weeks, um, would probably be doing some of the same monotonous things that the other Hallelujahs were doing, such as polishing her armor and things of that nature, standing and looking menacingly for no reason. Um, but another thing Sayana would be doing at this point is kind of watching and observing the other Hallelujahs from afar. Um, she's very interested in how they interact with each other and maybe members of their crew. If they say anything, if they seem to have maybe more of a personality, maybe something similar to how she might be feeling. Um, from her observations, is that something that she sees? So uh, you definitely can uh, observe anybody, any of you can observe anybody you want. So if you are focusing on the Holly Janaires, mm -hmm. um, you you look in them and you at first you do see, you know, you see a reflection of yourself, you know, people who look like you and uh, their personality is very similar to you. But the more time you spend with them, the more distorted that mirror becomes. And you realize that while they've been they look like you, talk like you, even sometimes act like you. They seem more robotic than you. You, I'm almost I'm kind of, it doesn't take very long, almost within the first couple of days, you realize that you have more of a free will than they do. They seem that, you know, they're on this mission because their commander told them to go on this mission and they follow orders and the mission parameters were this and so they're going to follow the mission parameters and you know the now that the navigators in charge of them they're follow the navigators rules they're not going to break them it's just it, it's like i said the word robot it's you get this feeling of just this these automatons who as opposed to the free will that you feel you have of not just going where you where you choose making the friends you want to make but also worshiping the god you want to worship you see, especially in, the, in Sienna's eyes, they seem more slave than free. Um, during the following week, she's going to try to maybe catch one of their eyes or try to maybe pull one of them aside for a short conversation. Absolutely. They, in fact, they would. This would be early on, as they would be interested to talk to you as well. Um, you know, how legionnaires are not a numerous people. Uh, so, you know, anytime a, a Holly Janeer would see another one, they would want to talk to them and, you know, find out how, because most, most that are not in the Gleaming Valley are on a quest of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they would want to see how that person's quest is going. So it would probably be, you know, the second or, excuse me, the second or third night, they would, it would be kind of a mutual, like, you would look over at them, they would look at you, and then, like, you would kind of go to the deck of the ship, kind of, not to be secretive, but not to necessarily be overheard by everyone at once. Mm -hmm. um, a is going to approach them upon the deck and she's going to ask, is this your first quest? No, sister. Uh, we, as a squad, have been on many. For the glory of Cory, we have been on several skirmishing missions against the necromancers of Glavido Toe. We have helped clear out some of the titan spawn that roams the Broadreach Forest. And uh, it has been deemed that the finding of this blossom of the of this of the island within the Blossom Sea uh, would do great things to bring glory to the name of Corian. And so that is why we are here. And what about you, sister? Is this the first time you've left the valley? I've been away for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, maybe for different reasons than yourself. Um, to look for something a little bit more meaningful in life. But I'm curious. For the glory of Corian, why do you, why do you worship him? Now that you're out in the world, there's so many other gods that you could possibly worship or follow or learn about. Why him? They all just kind of look, they all look at you with a very similar, just like, not even confused, just like, it's almost as if the words you said were in a different language. 
and they're just like it is through the grace of Corian that our souls were bound back to this plane to be given another purpose why do we worship Corian is the same as asking why do hollow legionnaires exist in the first or our, our pillar of the hollow legionnaires exist in the first place it is Corian's will that we were brought back to life, and it is Corian's will that would be done through us. She pauses to consider for a moment, and she just puts a hand on her chin in thought, and she says, well, what if it was through the grace of another god that your soul was even brought into this plane to begin with? Very unlikely, but I guess we could humor that inquiry. Corian is the ruler of the gods, the one that allows the other gods to have their domains, the one that keeps the order and the peace, the one that brought the divine war to an end. Why serve a prince when you could serve a king? Interesting. And what if they have different things to offer you? Something more tantalizing? something more exciting or exhilarating. There is nothing I want more than to do Corian's will. I get the sense that is not the same for you, sister. What is it that you want? Mm, what do I want? I want to feel like I'm more than a servant, that I'm living a life that I want to live, that something that makes me feel good. Um, mindfully following Koryun, without any say in the matter of where, where I go or what I do or what I say, if something just didn't feel right. Kind of gives you like a like he nods, he turns his head and gives you kind of a half smile. Just like, sister, I think that is just your previous life bleeding over into this one. It is not uncommon for our people to have emotions that remain strongly from pre our previous lives bleed over into this one. And so, it is of my opinion that you just forget about that. Have you forgotten about yours? There are times early in the morning, late at night, that flashes of emotion or images from my previous life come into this one, but nothing that drives me, nothing that I can't put out of my mind immediately. But are you saying it's not the same for you? It's quite the opposite, actually. When I think about my past life and the images and flashes that I get, I get excited. I, it makes me happy. Well, I've, our people are not a long lived one and our purpose, as the other mortal races like to say, is not truly defined. Many of us, yes, are soldiers of Gorion, but Perhaps you are one of the unique, one of those that the reason that your soul was brought back was to finish whatever it is this previous life did not. Who is to say why you were given this gift, but unfortunately I cannot offer any insight as this is not how my life has gone. At that, um, Sienna is just going to give a curt bow and she's going to say, thank you. This, this conversation was eye-opening to say the least. Um, and with that, she's going to take her leave and continue to stand Stentinel um, on her ship. Okay. Uh, as you walk away, he just kind of shouts out just once more, just like, remember, uh, none of our race has ever died from old age, for we are that young of a race. We do not know anything about ourselves more than anyone else does. 
and with that, we'll kind of turn back to the uh, other legionnaires and they'll continue to talk amongst themselves. Um, I think after that, Cyano will probably spend some time um, standing sol in solitude, but mostly thinking to herself um, and kind of just going over the conversation that she just had. This is same night, or you said this was earlier in the week, Kims? Um, so I think she probably would have spent a lot of time just watching them like a creeper in the corner for mm -hmm. the first few days. Um, and then probably throughout the middle of the week, she would have had this conversation with them. So okay. this, would have been, this would have been different, right? Okay. <coughs> if I've been spending my time out you know, not sleeping on deck. I assume I run into you every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Yes, probably so, actually. I figure it gets to a point where unless, you know, we have something to talk about, I just kind of silently walk past you back to my room, do whatever it is I need to do, come back this way. You know, we, we get a series of nods that tell us, have you seen anybody, anything mm -hmm. interesting? Um, but at this point, I, I sweep past you to go to my 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 door, and then I stop, like right beside you, and turn my head. Without even looking towards you, Sayana, still kind of looking out over the ocean, says, "Seeker, do you ever question your purpose in life? Why your soul was brought here to this plane, and what you're meant to do with it?" I turn on my heel and I face the same direction, just looking out over everything. Quite a bit. In fact, it is my profession of choice. You have questions, such as? What did your answer turn out to be? Did you find one? Of course I did. And here I am. You want to know my purpose. So do I. And yet, no matter who I ask, I am the only person that has ever given myself an answer. I find that that is a common sentiment. The gods, they have their desires. We fulfill them, and sometimes they bless us. Sometimes we are simply trod underfoot. The motions of waves and storms, the maws of animals. But you and I, we have something in common. What do you think that is? Death probably follows us wherever we go. Death follows all things wherever they go. Death is inside of all things and it grows and blooms. You- Perhaps in higher number than most, I should say. I do not think that likely. I am a doctor. I do not kill unless I have to. The question, though, if death is your focus, why do you kill? For what purpose? Answer me this without saying the word Van Gogh. Hmm. She stands there for a moment, truly pondering the question. And she says, I don't know. I Have do you know. ever killed except in Van Gogh's name? She shakes her head. Have you ever committed an act of violence for yourself or for any other purpose? She shakes her head again. Perhaps next time you feel that call, you hesitate a moment. You see what happens. You make your decision with a moment of consideration. You may find that the answer that comes from you is different from the answer that comes from the gods. And if so, you arrive at what conclusion? Why? Would you kill them? Because you decided it so. Why would you show mercy? Because you decided it so. 
you lack some of the tools that help other races understand this easier, but you are fully capable of understanding. When did you first hear the call to Van Gogh? Shortly after I was, and she pauses and kind of struggles with the words to use here. And she ends up saying, shortly after I arrived. You arrived, yes. You've been on only this path for what you perceive to be your entire life, no? Yes, that's correct. But you do not understand where death comes from. You are a gardener who does not care for her flowers. Death grows in all things. And the purpose of violence is a harvest. You do not harvest your wheat simply to have it sit in store, you make bread. Death of creatures like yourself, like myself, like beasts. It is harvested to fuel the fires of life. The Hydra, even wounded, ate only one or two cows at a time. It had the full capability. You saw its heads. It could have torn through that village, eaten everything in there, but that was not what it needed. You do not feel hunger, so you do not understand. Your death, the death that you deal, is fundamentally different. Since you cannot feed yourself, you have to ask, what is it you are feeding with your harvest? Why not harvest something else? Find something that feeds you. Sayana at that point doesn't say much more, but she nods in, in understanding, perhaps not yet in agreement. And she just says, thank you, Seeker. If you need me, I will be in the crow's nest. If you see Lamalton and he looks wounded or like he's getting away with something, send him my way. I will. I give a nod. Go to my room, grab my stuff, and on the way back out as I'm heading to you know, take my journal up to the crow's nest, I'm just going to mutter, good night, Sayana, on my way past. Sleep well, Seeker. I don't. Neither do I. Okay. We'll let Lamalthoon think a little bit more about his strategy to investigate the Windwalker, and he can implement that plan when we come back from break. Oh, because oh. I have my plan, so I can. I can I'm, okay, I, perfect. I can tell everyone what it is and just have them no, no, sit no. on you, break. About how bad no, no, no. It is. see now, oh. no, see now they got to come back. This is why you come back and stay with us through break. All right, see, ten minutes. Is it is eleven twenty-eight Eastern Standard Time. We are right back. Eleven thirty-eight Eastern Standard Time. Don't go anywhere. Don't change the channel. It's a bad plan. Stay. <laughs>
And welcome back to Draco Tennis Season 2 of Flight of Whimsy. Our characters have been figuring out how they've been growing, developing, and talking to one another over the last couple of weeks while at sea. And uh, it is the night of the end of week two. Secret Pajat has alerted Lamalthoon that one of the Windwalkers was taking a walk, as they put it, around their ship. And Lamathun now has a plan to investigate Lamathun. An appropriately terrible plan. First, I need to go get Gar. Oh, God. Okay. Already? Uh, Gar is drunk. That's perfect. Okay. <clears throat> Um, excuse me, Gar, my friend. What? <laughs> Do you still have your large fork? Uh... What? The spear with three points that talks to fish. Oh! Fishy chatty! Yeah! Yes. Excellent. Do me a favor. Come with me. Come, come, come here. Uh, Gar will stumble out using the trident as an extra leg. Yep. Okay. Now I need you to focus up. Uh, what? Okay. Let the, let the breeze and the salt air and that brine uh, sober you up a little bit. <laughs> yep, get it out. Get it all out. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. I'm good. So what's up? I would like you to Mr. use... Mr. Dancy Pants. Yes, my pants are dancing. <clears throat> okay, what? I need you to use your fish talking device to have, I don't know, a marlin, perhaps, or some sort of aquatic animal. <laughs> Just circle around the boat and see if they see anything that's not supposed to be there. I look over. See if I can see any fish. It's pretty dark. Uh, yeah, it's very dark. Uh, uh, there's like a half moon, um, so there's a little bit of light, but not a ton. You de and you definitely can't see through the water. Does it have to be uh, vision based? I thought it was a psychic link. It becomes a psychic link, but uh, hold on, let me let me find it real quick. It is no, stop giving me another thing. It looks like it just says uh, anything that I had. It just says while carrying it, use an action to cast Dominate Beast. So Dominate Beast uh, is uh -oh. 60 feet. I can see within range. So I know a way to make this work. Just give Gar a good old pat on the back. I believe in you. I'll pat him on the back. Pat me a little bit harder than that. I'm not pushing you overboard. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Oh. Yeah, a little bit. Sorry. But are there any fish now swirling around there? I hate this. It mm. takes a little while. Uh, but then you do see that some of the chunks are getting nibbled at. I hate this. <laughs> hey, Gar is an experienced fisherman. He has this seen is, Speaker Pajat doing it this entire time. This was not part of the terrible plan. <laughs> <sighs> Gar will command some of those fish that he can see as they come up. Well, try to, as they get a DC 15 save. Fail. Okay. Since Gar can have telepathic bond, should 
Gar will then have it circle around and see what it can see outside the ship with its fishy eyes. <laughs> uh, with its fishy eyes, uh, it's pretty dark for the fish as well. You see a couple other fish, um, some algae, some seaweed. About it. I see the sea. It it can't find anything on the on the hull. Uh, Gar tries to get it to view outside the water. Perception check for the fish. Here, I'll look it up. I'm gonna say that's that's gonna be a bit different than mine. Give me a good. Give, give us a good fish. Uh, you know what? I'll be fair. D and B five E has the quipper. Is like your general fish. I'll use the quippers statistic. Perception does not have a bonus, and it has a negative to its wisdom. Okay, you're welcome. But, luckily for you, the Dungeon Crate Large D20 rolled a natural 20. Hey! Oh, dungeon Crate! We take those. Uh, the, Got em. the fish do a complete lap of not just your boat, but all the boats. Does not see anything on out to the hull other than, you know, barnacles and you know, a couple of like, uh, like predatory fish, like you know the ones that stick to other fish. Gar will be holding himself against the railing very, very tightly as he says, "The fish see the ship." Can I go back to bed now? Yes. Everything's a little wobbly. Go. I should not try and out drink an owl bear. I don't know. Mm. I'm glad that you've learned oh, something from this. In that case, it was not a loss. Uh, Have a good evening, guy. Goodbye. That feels better. And I touch myself in the head to take away my drunkenness. <laughs> okay. I points your lay on hands, and you suddenly feel a lot better. I'm glad right. you did that good after night. I needed your help. I'm... Hey, you didn't say that I actually needed to. Goodbye. Oh, the... Goodbye. Bringing the fish memories. Good night. Right. So that was the first half of the plan. I'm oh. just staring over the top of the crow's nest at all this. Yeah, you, you shit. see that whole. Yeah, you see that whole. Inter- and I look over to Sayana and I lock eyes with Sayana. And You're I also just kind this whole interaction. Just gesture like. Cheyenne, Cyano shrugs. She Why did they ask you? I'm, I'm shouting down at Lamalthun. Why did I ask you to do this? <laughs> I expected more. Heroes of Elysium! And friends. <laughs> what uh, kind of spooky woo are you getting up to down there? I, is 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 Pizat within 120 feet? Can we say yes, yeah. please? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. The the crow's nest is not like this is not a huge ship, so the crow's nest is not more than 120 feet. Okay. Now, I'll, I'll, instead of yelling, I will just message, just be like, "The hole has been checked. There is no damage. There is nothing attached." Yane will peek up from a hammock on the deck. Damage. Oh, you- you're chilling topside too. Well, that was yeah. that was message. So that is oh darn only two. Okay, never mind. Yeah, or wait. Unfort yeah, unfortunately, yeah. that's the only thing you wouldn't have heard is what Lamalthun said to Pajat. You'd have heard everything else that happened. Spooky woo. Um, so that oh. is clear. Um. Okay. Do I do the other terrible part of my plan? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Perfect. You understand. I expected you to investigate firsthand. Yes, which is what I'm about to go do. All right. Well, inv- Okay. I have to clarify a question quickly. So okay. I was able in the last session to make the role that allowed me to generally understand what the hand... What their their sign language was for the monks. 
But my question to you is, comprehend languages. So there is the way that it's written is interesting because it would it probably would not count this, but I'm not sure if they considered sign language when they wrote this. So for the duration, you understand the literal meaning of any spoken language that you hear. You also understand any written language you can see. It must be touching the surface on which the words are written. It takes about one minute to read one page of text. Spell doesn't. I would, abso I would, I would absolutely allow that spell. Okay. Because sign language, sign language is a language. So okay. I will absolutely allow that to work. Awesome. All right. Then I'm going to ritually cast Comprehend Languages. Okay. And then I am going to... Alter Self. Oh. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. To what? One of the monks. Not the one that Seeker told me. Since I was up close and talked to them and would have seen them, uh, I would want to appear like one of the... Not the leader, not the one that I need to investigate, but like just one of the randos. You are on the deck of your ship, looking like one of the monks. And then I will stand like one of the monks, do the posture like one of the monks, and I will bow to everyone on the ship, and then I will make my way back across to their ship, as to them. Ah! At this point, Yane will peek over the hammock and go, Oh, that was kind of spooky, woo, huh? <coughs> oh. I'll allow it. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, you get over to the uh, Windwalker ship and uh, um, the crew of their ship just kind of sees you walk across. A couple of them kind of look at you and it's just like, oh, I guess I didn't see them leave. Well, you know, they can walk on wind. And they kind of go back to their uh, you know, various duties. But you were now on the deck of their ship. None of the other monks are here, it uh, looks like. It's just the crew of the ship. Okay. Uh, I'm going to act, I'm going to walk around like I belong there, you know, so no okay. super sneaky or anything like that, just kind of flying casual. Um, but I want I don't to. Know. Fly <laughs> casually. <laughs> um, but I'm going to, I mean,. I'm assuming the, the small ships, like our ship and their ship, is going to have roughly the same layout. Um, yes. So. Yeah, you could definitely, that would be a correct assumption. Okay. So I will make my way down to where the crew, or where the, the um, not the crew, bleh, where the guest houses are. The, the, the. Okay. So below deck. State. What do they call broom in a boat? Uh cabin yes uh yes yeah, so you make your way below deck to where the cabins would be and uh kind of you know look up and down the hallway nobody walking um you can you can continue however you'd like there's they're not passing any of them you don't see anybody in the hallway okay then i will move kind of around and kind of start investigating kind of I'll listen um, see if I can hear any of them in their rooms still in the hallway do I hear them moving uh, around you can give me a perception check what's the bonus I got on my next skill uh, advantage I believe right Bernie correct advantage perception then it's a 22. 22. You listen. You don't hear anything. Not just like... You don't hear voices or the scuffing of furniture or chairs moving. But like you don't hear anything. It is... Oddly quiet.
Okay. Interesting. <laughs> um... Okay. I will move to one of the doors and just kind of How would they can I they probably don't knock. I will move to one of the doors and just open it. I uh, move to the first door, mm -hmm. attempt to open it, and it is locked. Hmm. Can I move down the hall and just check all of the doors? Yep, they're all locked. Perfect. There's five of them. Uh, there are. Let me double check. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, five. Okay, I will move to the far end of the hall, down, um, farthest away from where I would have come below deck, um, and start, and I will, I will pick a lock. Uh, okay, do you have a uh, set of thieves tools? I do. Okay, you may give me a set of hands check then. Using your thieves tools proficiency. Where, where are you thieves tools? Uh, 24. 24. Door's unlocked. And I will open it and step in. Open it. Nothing. There's bed that is made. There's a de it is laid out very similar, similarly to any of your cabins, but it is empty. No items, no possessions. No. Bed's been, I assume, not even touched. Correct. I check for dust. Is this days worth of not being? Yes. Come into okay. Can I? Okay. So they come back to this ship. We saw them come back to this ship, right? Yes. Yes. You see them come back to the ship. Okay, can I make a roll for Lamalthoon to try to figure out, knowing that they're airwalkers, where they might be going? Uh, sure, give me a uh, history check. History. Ooh, had to happen eventually. Um, you still have your DM inspiration. Yeah, but that will, I rolled a two, so uh, ah. total is a five. Um, you rack your brain and you can't remember any unusual habits um, that the uh, that the uh, Otanazu have um, there's, there's not like you know a 
sleep in midair or mm -hmm. they you know phase into the astral plane like you there's nothing like that that like sticks out to you like oh yeah like you know they i forgot they they do this weird thing when they go to sleep so where they're from it's incredibly windy that's their, yes. that's their whole thing they don't sleep on the like on cots like on the side of the ship do they we haven't seen them do that uh no and with the natural 20 the the fish would have had that you commanded and uh -huh. see through and all that jazz there was nothing unusual hanging off the ship either like on the uh underside of out of it or like on the sides then i I'll close and I'll lock the door back up, make my way back up okay. to the deck, and I want to look up, like into the rigging. Okay. Uh, can we, uh, no, there's the the boats would keep the the lamp the lamps on through the night. You don't notice anything. You don't see anything. Where, uh... I can't think of, like, where else to go. They don't have rooms, they don't sleep outside the ship, they don't sleep up above the ship. They came back to this boat. Um, you could do a very, a very dumb thing, but without speaking, ask one of the shipmates where they go, where they went. It's not a bad idea. I was actually thinking similarly. I... Just, just don't talk to them. Right, right. Then I know how to talk to them. I just always, I thought it's all you know, in my head to be like. Hey, where our friends go and do the thing we always do, you know. Um Okay, I'll I'll I mean I will. I guess I'll just look to one of the crew members and just kind of make a questioning gaze using the comprehend language to do it properly. Uh okay, so you go back up to the deck mm -hmm. to one of the uh the crew and you kind of get one's attention and he's just like Ugh. Trying to communicate. Uh, uh, what? And you know, you, you using your comprehend languages, you're able to kind of give sign. You know, uh, what is it exactly you're trying to say? Um. Where uh, where are the others? Kind of looks at you. He's like down. And he points to like below deck where you just came from. Hmm. Is there like a cargo hold on that ship? It would be similar design to yours. So yes, there is a like a hold that has you know supplies and things like that. There aren't like. And then, like, the, the crew's, like, hammocks, where they sleep. Okay. Um... Maybe they're all in the hold. Oh, in the hold? I, th I wasn't... Okay. All right. Thank you. Um... And I'll... He just kind of looks at you, just, like, very confused, like... Just me where his friends are. Yeah. So... Back to, like, swap, swapping the deck. And then, instead of the rooms, I'm my way back down to the hold... Okay. Uh, you get to uh, the third level of the ship. Look around very much like yours. Excuse me. Lots of fresh water. Uh, lots of food. Some arms, cannonballs, powder, things like that. But mm -hmm. And then the, the crew's hammocks are all... But, and it's a very open area. Um, mm -hmm. So just a quick look around. You 
don't see the the monks, don't see the windwalkers. <clears throat> okay. Then in that case, um. Okay. In that case, I will drop the altar self. Okay. Your form shifts back to that of the Malthoon. I will then ritually cast it down in the hole, detect magic. Okay. Are they putting themselves somewhere else? Is there a trace of magic that they are porting somewhere? Is there any whatever school of magic that would be. And with uh, concentration up to ten minutes, I'll just kind of walk around and scan. Okay. Uh, you don't check anything on the, on the hold. Uh, you go back up to the cabin area uh, and behind uh, one of the cabin doors, uh, you pick up the sense of uh, conjuration magic. Okay. I will open that door. Alright, give me a lockpick check. I'll use the inspiration. Okay. Thirteen. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's no. Mm -hmm. It's nothing more than the regular lock for the yeah, door. So what I it assumed. takes you a bit long. It takes you a bit longer than the other door, but the tumblers you receive shit. It will open the door. Uh, um, and you cannot fiz You cannot. You not. You can't see with your eyes, but with the detect magic spell, you're able to get a, a faint aura in the middle of the room. Uh, of conjuration magic, but you, your your eyes do not see anything. It's conjuration, the school for like teleportation. Uh, conjuration magic uh, has a large variety. You can, you know, summon things. Summon, you yeah. can uh, banish things. You can. It's um, moving things. Okay. Teleport to a pocket dimension. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, for instance, like the spell teleport is a conjuration spell as well. Gotcha. to hide here uh okay um is it once again it's just another very bare room um, there's nothing in here to hide with there's the bed but there's not like you can't really you can go underneath the bed but there's not like it doesn't cover you no there's the desk that's a very simple once again you could be underneath the desk but you're very kind of out in the open there's a chair these are okay. very Spartan. These are very Spartan rooms. Okay, all right. We'll we'll take the information that we've got. Then I'll just I'll just head back. Okay. Uh, as you're walking back to your ship now, as the Malthoon, mm -hmm. uh, the crew is just kind of like, uh, um, where did you come from? Hmm? You were not seen coming aboard the ship. Then perhaps you should. 
watch closer. He points up to the guy up in the crow's nest who's just like on watch. Mm -hmm. So, and he kind of like steps in front of the gangplank to get off the ship. So I'm gonna need you to answer the question, how'd you get on the ship? I walked aboard. That is not accurate. It is, thank you. Excuse me. As you try to pass me, he's like, I and he just he stands in your way. And he's I, like, I'm not. I I will need you to answer the question truthfully, or we will go see the navigator. I walked aboard this ship. And your man in the crow's nest didn't notice me. Okay, if you'll come with me, we'll talk to the navigator. He can sort this out. <laughs> I'm not going to fight this guy, so fine. Okay, uh, he leads you back to the central ship um, where the dinners are held um, and goes uh, down to where the mess is. Uh, any, they any, walk. Any, and most it sounds like all of you have have left that ship. So, you know, do they walk past our crow's nest as they go? Um, no, but you'd be able to see it from your ship's crow's nest that Lamalthian is walking back is with being someone escorted and, by a crew member and is walking back down into the center ship. You see me staring. I make no effort to hide myself. I do not say a thing or gesture. <clears throat> Uh, and then I, I I crawl down and I go over to Sayana and very gently lay my hand on her shoulder. Never let me make that mistake again. Letting the mouth in out of your sight? Asking him to do anything that requires sensitivity. Noted. <clears throat> and I go close myself in my room because I'm embarrassed. Okay. <clears throat> uh you're taken to the large uh, interior singular cabin here uh, and the crewman knocks on the door. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a second and then the slide of a couple bolts and the door is flung open. Uh, the navigator kind of just has a, a, a loose shirt on, uh, um, kind of his uh, hair slicked back uh, around his uh, one ram's horn. Definitely looks like, you know, he's his eyes are a little bloodshot, not from drinking or anything like that. Just, you know, it's been... A long couple of weeks with nothing to show for it so far. Sure. <clears throat> and how may I help you? And the crewman's just like, uh, sorry to bother you, navigator, but I caught Lamalthoon here on the Windwalker ship. Um, walking off of the ship, he did not walk on the ship. May I make a small correction? He did not the catch me. Th that, the navigator's just looking, and he's just like, he did not catch me. I walked up to him. He please, stares at you. Please do not present this as though I was sulking about. Thank you. That the the navigator just stares at you. Give me a um, whichever one you would like to go with: persuasion or deception check. <laughs> I, I will allow you to say that. Insane. I will allow you to convince. <laughs> Allow you to say it as if it's truth or if it's a lie. It as was Lamal true. <laughs> I, I te technically, yes, it was true, but uh, eight. This 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 die is awesome. Uh, the navigator just looks at you, cocks his head, and he's like, <clears throat> "I will Why give you persuasion." doesn't make any oh. sense. Yeah, that, that sounds dumb. That's... Uh, <laughs> uh, he just cocks his head and he's just like, I will give you one more chance to tell the complete truth free from any slights or half-truths. Or, and he snaps his fingers and this portal made of green flame just appears and you can hear like faint wailing and screaming come from it. Or we take that trip to Dis, I promised. Walk through. Do it. Yeah, do it, pussy. <laughs> Walk into Dis. Walk into Dis. You won't. Althoon doesn't back down. 
Well, Malfoon, just, this is just, this is the he just, perfect. He just stares at you. This is the perfect opportunity to prove your superiority over the gods. Perfect opportunity. This is, you don't need, this is peer you pressure. You don't need anyone's help. You don't need the gods help. And fuck this captain. Go to Dis. This is this is peer pressure, little Malthorn. Do not give in. Why does Malthorn, that look like the face he's trying, of consideration? He's trying to diss you. You gonna take that? Oh my god. This isn't how it ends. I'm waiting. Yes. This is uh, not the end. Yes, you I'll are. I'll turn this car around. It's also it's this is also the way. <laughs> Once again. As I said before, I walked onto the ship. They did not notice me. And why is that? Because I'm an adventurer and a wizard and I have abilities that they cannot overcome. I'm sorry that your crew is just a crew. He looks at the crewman and he's just like, <clears throat> how many of the monks walked aboard the ship? He's thinking, he's like, well, the five in a group and then one other one came afterwards. So then he just immediately just swivels his pack back to you, his head back to you. So you disguise yourself as one of the monks. Why? <laughs> It took him all the five seconds. <laughs> now I think would be the time to talk about the <sighs> Hey. Whew. Hey, buddy, are you going to be okay? Fine. Well, we, we need it. Uh, oh, my God. You can, you can tell that, like, the stress of the job, and he's had some sleepless nights. There's just, there's, like, before when he was addressing all of you, talking about this adventure, the dangers... And when he gave that threat of, oh, you know, if you disagree, you break my rules, like, sure. mm, you know, I'm going to have to come down on you. And he has gotten to the point where, like, he's he is the father of the petulant child. And he's just like, you know, give me a reason why. And that's that's the, all the energy he is focusing at you right now. Why? Why? <sighs> to make sure that my ship was safe. Because, unfortunately, your crew is not catching people sneaking aboard or around ships, like I just proved. I really, Such ass. really hope you were not referring to how the Windwalkers like to take a stroll after dinner. I really hope... That is not what you're referring to. Please tell me that is not what you're referring to. I am referring to the fact that one by himself broke away from the rest of the group to walk at our ship. It was merely yes, an opportunity. They, they like to walk around the entire ship as a whole when it is docked together. <clears throat> Usually they walk together, do they not? Not always. They have been observed walking by themselves sometimes. Just lean back in my chair. Okay. Then I like to take a stroll by myself as one of them. What Not of onto ah! other people's ah! ships disguised oh. as Ex them. Excuse but me. But around. Excuse around me. is fine. <laughs> Excuse me. So they can walk around our ships using their air abilities, but I cannot walk through the their ships using my were, magic. The rules were no not violence, to no be sabotage. on each other's ships. They are not on your ship. Then perhaps the ship could... does not include the water around it or the air around it. I have a, then allow me just okay a clarification. Then I do apologize deeply, greatly, profusely. That's great to hear. I'm glad you apologize for taking on the impersonation of another one of the people on this trek that are experiencing the same dangers and the same hardships as 
to you. I trust this will not happen again. If you are to impersonate any other member of this journey, you will be taking the one-way trip, I promised you. Please, show him out. Oh, I, I, I'm aware of what a door is. Thank you. As soon as you walk out the door, it just slams of its own accord behind you. I'll the, kind of, the, the, kind of crew, the crewman who brought you here just looks at you and he's just like... I'll kind of lean kind of like my back against the door and just kind of rap once or twice. You seem incredibly stressed, sir. Is there any way we can assist oh my you? God. The door opens immediately and you fall as you are leaned against it. And you Fine. fall I'll look, I'll look up on your him. butt. I'm offering my help. Is there any Goodbye. Way? And it slams against your back and pushes you out. Ooh, the up, crewman I'll just look looks up. at you on the ground and is just like, he offers you a hand. I was going to say, I look, I, look, I look up at the crewman and just stick my hand out, just like, help, please. He he grabs your hand and he helps you up. He's just like, um, so, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, it, he might be in a bit of a mood. Um, I'm not sorry because you did kind of break one of the rules, but. Mm. Yeah, maybe don't talk to him for the rest of the journey. Yeah. Why is he so upset, though? Well, you did break one of the rules. Oh, no. Oh, no. I walked onto someone else's ship and did nothing. Why was he in a bad mood before that? Uh, not that he was in a bad... I, I had talked to him recently. He's not that he was in a bad mood, just he was a little tired. Um, he's a little curious as to why no attack has been made yet, but he's angry. Well, I would say he's angry now, but not before. <clears throat> just seems like a man of his abilities and stature and capabilities not being able to fulfill his end and losing sleep over it. Just let him know <clears throat> if he needs any help. The heroes of Elysian and friends are right here. He's just, he's just like, uh, sh sure, sure. Let me put it another way. He has five ships of capable heroes and adventurers. He doesn't need to lose sleep. And I'll walk off. He ain't wrong, though. That motherfucker could stand a delegate. Uh, okay. Unless there's anything anybody else wants to do, you're able to. How many weeks has it been night. since we started? Two. This is the end of the second week. Okay. I have two more weeks before I have to do it. Okay. <clears throat> um, you know, you would like to, if they see Lamalthun coming back. Uh, aboard the ship. Uh, that's yeah. entirely up to Lamalthun and how stealthily they want to come back to the ship. I imagine probably not at all. Onto the ship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Strut. Guess who just got yelled at? <laughs> Dude, you're your, your 12th grade cred is going up so high. Man, you, you fought the principal and won, buddy. <laughs> Uh, one. <laughs> I feel. Survive. I feel yeah. like I clearly yeah, but got the hand of that. <laughs> of course, Will Health feels feels that way. Oh, uh, but yes, you okay. would be able to see Lamathun coming back aboard the back aboard the ship. Where, where did you go? What, what were you doing? I was investigating. <laughs> Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! The Malthoon's a werewolf! Shake his head! Thank you, Flynn, for that colored commentary. Um, Campaign the player to... secret I've kept away from all of you. Me and Steve have kept away from all of you for, <laughs> a, <laughs> for a season and a half. <laughs> Damn! I've been investigating. <laughs> oh my god. Oh jeez. Okay. Huh. Sorry. 
a bad plan. <laughs> uh, but but what were you investigating? I I thought we were safe here. We are as safe as anyone agrees we are. As always. Can I, can I ask a question? Sorry. Um, what? I, uh, oh. I apologize, I interrupted. Um, did, did Devok see any of this as he was on his balcony? Uh, no, because the balcony would face out the back. Okay. Um, and all this is happening. So he's just fucking clueless. Okay. Unfortunately, yeah. Sorry, Steve. I apologize. I interrupted you. That's okay. Um, as always, your name rules are merely as safe as those agree to follow it so we were just making sure everyone was following them and we made sure everyone was following them by breaking them infallible oh. logic <laughs> yeah uh, I, I don't Malfoon think that's logics. how that works Lamalthoon is it not not <laughs> normally no, no? Are we concerned about malicious intent? You should always be concerned about malicious intent, in it. I mean, in specific. <laughs> yes, always be paranoid. I look around at the other ships. Yes, I think there's some specific things. You know, I, I can help. I can try. Oh, I, you are very capable of... Yes. Don't worry. It's okay for now. I believe. Question mark? Hmm. Okay. And you nay will settle back down into their hammock. Arms crossed. I, uh, I'll walk... Are you still up in the crow's nest? Um, was that? No, the seeker went back to their room. Okay. I'll look up and I'll see that uh, they're not there. And I'll kind of just look around. And I'll walk down to the cabins and knock on their door. You're, you're oh. After, like, a couple of seconds, you hear oh. the... the clack of metal on there and who's there well it's not Belsameth the door opens after a second <laughs> you fucked that up spectacularly I see I don't believe I did actually you don't believe you did no you got caught no I walked out in view of everybody that's not the same as getting caught. In their eyes, you got caught. That's all that matters. Did you learn anything useful? Useful, maybe, but I did learn something. If you tell me any trivia about sports and why they are named what they are, I am going to throw you overboard. <laughs> did you learn anything pertaining to our mission? To the other crews or about the navigator? The monks do not reside on their ship. They do not? No. They do not. Where, then? You search the whole ship? The whole ship. A trace of magic? Oh, yes. Conjuration. Illusion? Conjuration. They're not centralized invisible. in one location or spread out. Do you detect multiple signatures? Elaborate, man. Patience. You're very eager for all of the information. I thought you were a teacher. 
Unlike myself, you do not have all night. Hmm. Localized to one room, one specific cabin. I'm assuming they all gather together, perform a ritual, and send themselves somewhere more akin to their needs. It seems unlikely, given their history, or at least what Gar has told me about them. They seem perfectly steady when walking on the ships. They must have some other reason for disconnecting themselves from this realm. I wouldn't believe that it would be a discomfort with this particular area, but I'm thinking perhaps where they might something go to... I'm not even sure if it's something to hide. It might be a place where they go to better meditate or to view... To do what it is they need to center themselves. Not a discomfort here, but a more specific place they want to be. Perhaps. Then we have gained nothing other than more questions. I apologize for sending you on that. I thought perhaps there was a risk. I'll, uh, For the time being, I do not see one. I'll, uh, I'll smile and be like, no need to apologize. That was fun. It's been... I won't say boring, a monotonous two weeks. Also, I learned something else. I got a nice one-on-one -on -one with the navigator. Of course you did. Yes. Now you know why I walked up to that guard. You planned this. Perhaps. <laughs> and no what did out. you learn no from the out. navigator? Let's <laughs> <laughs> go let him lie to you like that. <laughs> <laughs> no inside check, nothing. <laughs> I don't need to check because I don't fucking believe him. <laughs> As well, you shouldn't. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> um, he is tired. More so than just someone who's been sailing for two weeks. He's losing sleep. He is concerned. He's not getting what he thought he would get from the Kraken. In a sense, he's lost. And where does that lead us? Are we in the Blood Sea? No, this is specifically, yeah, the Blood Sea is to the southeast. Sea. This is the Blossoming Sea. This is the Blossoming Sea, that's right. Yeah, otherwise, if you were in the, if you were in the Blood Sea, your, your ship would be, like, melting partially. There would be these horrible Titan spawn abominations constantly attacking and destroying your ship. You know, you were very lucky in, in let me, the Blossoming let Sea. Let me change the map then, because I... Yeah, keep going south. There we go. Can I just say keep that going I south. thought we were in the Blossoming just... Sea from the map? Oh, uh, yeah. The, the the way the map, because it had to be cut together, <laughs> the L is cut It's cut off. It's Blossoming, not Bosom. Not a Bosom. <laughs> Got it. That, Noted. that mm -hmm. is as far south as the map goes, Patty. Yes. Yep. Okay. You are past, at this point, you are past the edges of the map. <gasps> like my intro. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Oh, oh my god. I think I said something like, uh, people who go to the edges of the map don't come back. Don't come back, don't yeah. So, some, something like that. Something I don't along it those lines. Fine. Very fine. well. But I would just... Shut the door in the mouth in space. TPK. TPK. When, <laughs> when they do that, it's like, why is everyone doing that today? Why does everyone say that? <laughs> okay. Uh, the night concludes, and uh, you all get your various rests. Uh, another couple days goes by. Same kind of thing. It's on the fourth day, so you're two weeks and four days in. Can I ask the wizard question? Can I ask the wizard question? Sure. Are there any spells I can learn across any of the ships? No. Damn. Are you sure? 
I mean, the only way you'd get some spells is if you could if you if you could identify anybody else who's a wizard specifically mm. and ask to borrow their spell book, which, which they um, totally do. Totally, yeah. Wizards definitely aren't super protective. We're all of their in spell this books. together. <laughs> We're you all could collaborate this with together, Acadia. Hand in hand. <clears throat> all right, fair it's true. You could ask Acadia if you want. You could ask Acadia. You can Who? jump overboard. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is Acadia? <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying this name like I should know who this person is. Alright. Uh, but yeah, no. Unless you, basically, if you could convince Acadia to collaborate with you, which, like... Let's not, not waste. Let's not waste that time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, you know, I don't want to say no. Um, but yeah, so... But it's on the fourth day that uh, it starts to rain. Just a drizzle. Um, and it's... At first, it's welcome, because at least something is happening. You know, the weather has changed. Um, there is a difference, finally, in the days. But then when the drizzling doesn't stop over the next three days, and then it intensifies, and then it intensifies until it's a deluge, gale force winds, the seas are no longer calm. Now everyone needs to give me a constitution saving throw as things have gotten beyond choppy. Swells are 10 feet at a time. Uh, 19. This is constitution okay. saving throw to... Not puke or guts out. Oh. Who wants to be standing nearby me for that plus four? I got um, a seven oh. total. I got a 17. Patty. Uh, Sina is fine. Yanae is not fine. After the Anyone. first three days, I just stop eating. Oh, okay. That's true. You can just do that now. <clears throat> uh, all right. But you still have to do the, do the throats to prevent the dry heaves. The dry heaves. Okay. Which, in some cases, are sometimes worse. So, at least in my opinion. Oh, many times worse sometimes. Three. I'm not. Com I am not proficient in that at all. Uh, 19. Okay, you're fine. Lamouth, Lamouth in, what'd you get? Uh, am I getting the plus four from... Yeah, Gar? yeah, we'll say In that. a 17 yeah, we'll total. Fine. Everyone but Yune is fine. Yay, oh, no. hey. The, uh, the boat has suddenly become a cork in a, uh, in a bath, and it is bobbing. It is taking on a lot of water at points. It is, uh up and down and your stomach seems to follow it up and down uh, and there in between this the crashes of thunder and the flares of lightning and the yelling of the uh of the of the crew to you know uh hoist up the sails uh batten down hatches things like that is the sound of Yune. <clears throat> this continues for a few more days Given, when... given my uh, my my claim to being a doctor, after the first day of Yane, just being tossed around horribly, I'm going to sit down with Gar and Yane and and blood to stone their way through it. Okay. Hurts a little, but it might help. Patty's looking at charts. I'm scared. No, I'm not looking at charts. I have changed the map. Patty changed and, uh... the map. I'm extra scared. Uh oh. Oh no. Nash How else are we supposed to fight a kraken without a kraken? With a, without a map and a kraken and <laughs> battle music. It is three plus weeks now close to four you've been searching but it seems that the weather has found you first lightning thunder the waves sea a 
attempts to claim your boat. The navigator, your ships have brought been brought closer together now. As the storm approaches, the navigator knows what this means. Hold fast, everyone. It is time. It has finally happened. Udagast has sent its worst. The island has found us. Look! And he points out. And with a, as he points, a flash of lightning flares. And you can see, for the first time in almost a month now, land. You see an island. And your ships are being rolled with the waves, seemingly as they appro- would be approaching that island, but it never seems to get any closer. See how Utagast keeps it in range, in sight, but never we are able to reach it. Every man, every woman, every person to station. Arms at ready. Load the cannons. This is our first test. If you've not fought a Kraken before, you will now. As the ship rolls, once again, all of them come together. Suddenly, the rain continues to pelt. The lightning still flashes. The thunder still roars. But the sea calms momentarily until a great whirling of winds is sounded and suddenly all the ships where they are start to move of their own accord not forward or backward but circular and you all look over the ship into the water a gigantic whirlpool has formed slowly slowly bringing in all of your ships into the middle of it. Another flash of lightning, another clash of thunder. And this is where you notice with that flash of lightning, shadows appearing underneath each of the ships, long and powerful, wide. You see them start to wrap around each of them. And as you spot as you spot something growing, climbing up the side of one of the other ships, is when your own crew shouts, Contact! We've got an enemy on the board! And as he's yelling, he's a large, gigantic tentacle with one of the uh, suckers as big as his body just wraps around him and rips him off the ship. (laughs) Wilhelm screams down into the water, pulled off immediately. The bells are rung on all the ships. All the lanterns are lit. Everyone needs to roll initiative as the Kraken, under control of Utagast, has decided now is the time to test you all. Roll initiative. Damn. <laughs> or Wilhelm. <laughs> this, this is during the day. Uh, it was it was the day? It is now pitch black night out. The storm clouds have rolled in. The only thing you, the only time you can see the other ships uh, is when you get a sight of them whirling past you as you were all kind of uh, unevenly circling around and you see the lanterns or a flash of lightning allows you a glimpse. And it's during these flashes of lightning that you can kind of see how the battles are going on the other ships. Um, you see, you know, bolts of fire and things like that coming off the ship where the, uh, the yeah. wind walkers are. You see uh several uh several figures kind of be formed out of the ocean itself and stand aboard uh the ship that is acadia's and they all seem to draw ghostly blades and fight at the master's command you see the dragoons kind of form up in this you know a, a formation that might work on land but they clearly have no experience fighting on the ships um some battles look like they're going well some look like they're not going very well at all that's a really good description. I don't think I see that because I got a nat one. I'm probably in my room. No, this was this was initiative. You're all oh, on. Beautiful. You've all yeah. You were all called aboard uh, the deck as the navigator kind of yelled out to all of you that you know shit's about to go down. Well, s- still a nat one. I'm last in line. Thirteen. Twenty-one. Fifteen. 
15. I imagine Yune has a higher... Well, actually, I don't know. Who has the higher dex between two? My dex is a 20. 20. Uh, both of you roll again. Copycat. 24. Seven. I think that was dunked. Down. Okay. Uh, Yune will go before the mouth thing. Aw. Uh, Devok, what did you have? Uh, two. Two total? <laughs> okay. Uh, Seeker, do you have any bonus to that one, or is it just one? Oh, um, total of four. Okay. Uh, okay. And then... Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Uh, I'm loving this D20 from Dungeon Crate. Um, <laughs> I'm not. Can you, Can you stop? Roll. Can you stop now that we're fighting using that Rolling one? Rolling quite well. Quite well. Uh, um, uh, I got a couple dice you can use instead, please. Thank you very much. Well, Devin has also touched those dice. I don't know how useful they're going to be. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> there. No, he really just needs to touch my digital dice because they're the worst. Yeah. Clicky clacks. Oh, God. Clicky clacks do this, me better. This guy yeah, I mean, rolls so well. God damn it, Patty. Stop. I'm, I'm going to say that uh, Dungeon Crate really wanted you to enjoy them, so maybe they like waited their giant d20 yeah, just I'm for cold. Patty. Okay, Patty's face that needs to stop being so gleeful. A Patty a Potter's. Big bonus. I'm, just gonna I'm terrified. I'm just gonna look at my art and go hey, to my Patty. Place. Look at that. Hey, that's beautiful art. Patty. That's a big bonus. Okay. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing this ten minutes before closing, Patty? Uh, He's prepping us for next week. Don't worry yeah. about it. Uh, PK. Oh yeah. PK. <laughs> it just keeps getting better. Uh, uh, another natural 20. Uh, 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 At least he's burning these nat 20s on like initiative. Have all the bad guys go first, just alpha you guys off the field so you guys know how it feels. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, we can't die all this early on, right? Right? Sure. I mean, I assume sure. we just take over one of the other crews, right? <laughs> Backup it's true, you could do that. <clears throat> uh, what do we want to go with for this one? Probably that one, right? Just to fuck you guys super hard. I have not rolled below a 12 with the stop yet. We'll stop. <laughs> no. Statistically unlikely, so don't. I'm worried about the number of things Patty is rolling for right now. Don't worry about it. I, I figure so it's because we were also officially worried. So well, much you figure to be had. he's fighting us with a kraken, so it can't be it. Now we've got to have all those little guys that are jumping on board the ship for us to be murdered by first. Deep ones. No. Yay. No. It is no. every single tentacle this kraken has. <clears throat> okay. Here, what we got? Um, he didn't deny that, that one. <clears throat> so, like I said, all of, all of the ships are spinning uh, along this whirlpool and slowly being dragged down to the center of it. Um, the, uh, you look into the middle of this uh, whirlpool and you just see the bottomless, fa bottomless, fathomless darkness that is the crushing depths of the abyss of the sea, and you see your fate before you. In the air, the electricity from the lightning seems to spark and unnaturally strikes the ships. It has set one of them afire. You can feel it when it when the lightning, it seems to land near some of you occasionally. You can feel the electric current run up your spine, all the hair on all of your arms stands up 
but most terrifying of all. And rolling through, I need each of you to give me a strength saving throw as a huge tidal wave comes from almost seeming to form out of the whirlpool itself and comes crashing against all of the ships. See, Cyana, all hold on for dear life. Rolled 19. Okay. 25. Okay. A 10? Am I allowed to re-roll this for, with anything? Uh, do you have any votes? That, that would give you a re-roll. Uh, let me see. I, I, sh- I believe I do, but I have to find where I put them, so I... How much is a... I'm not lying. How much are the audience worth? Uh, that that that's, uh, audience vote is a uh, uh, advantage, so you get you could roll again. Okay. Yeah, audience audience and votes. audience and player audience and player votes are both uh, advantage, and then oh, if I if I give you inspiration, and you can add a d six. So that's just how I roll. I'm gonna roll with advantage. Okay. Uh, would you say push out? I'm sorry. Nineteen total. Okay. It didn't fucking help. Alright, let's see what I got. Uh, 14. Okay. Well, Malfoon? 16. Yane and Devok both fail. Yeah, I, I can't find where I put my notes for votes. But uh, that also means oh, I'm sorry, conscience. That's right. I cannot say that I have one. <laughs> I appreciate no. you uh, being honest like that. I, I can say you had one two week or two two weeks ago. I just don't know if you used any since. I don't remember. I will just go with with Yane. Feels this one. Okay. The tidal wave washes, and you can see it just coming across the ships that are before you in its path. And then you, you see them get swallowed whole by this wave that seems to be a sentient creature of its own moving across the whirlpool. And then you all brace yourselves as best you can as it washes across your ship as well. You see a couple of the crewmen go flying off the ship. Mm. And as well as Yune and Devok, they both are seen taken with the tidal wave lifted up off of the boat. Uh, everyone take wait Devok can't swim can he oh let's do 10 hell yeah brother no I don't like this okay uh, everyone who saved will take half of 23 bludgeoning damage Jesus Patty so those who did not save will take the full bludgeoning damage uh, as well as be blown off the ship now there are ropes and things that are loose on the ship there are also the other ships nearby and you are all traveling in a whirlpool but we'll have to see if our players are able to get back up on their ship next week as we are out of time for this week of course he is knew that was it has been a a pleasure telling the story to you listeners we hope you enjoyed what you saw and heard as much as we enjoyed performing it for you I'd like to once again thank Onyx Path Publishing Ash from Tabletop Vincept Dungeon Crate Gem Hammer and Sons QU Empire and Hit Point Press a special shout out goes to all of our Patreon subscribers and Twitch subscribers and you can join the ranks of our Twitch subscribers by using your Prime Gaming sub if you have Amazon Prime. Be- you can be included in that shout out next time. Uh, check out our works on GM's Guild and Drive Through RPG. Get some bodacious merch on our merch store. Join our Discord to become part of the best community on the internet. Let's hear from our wonder- from our players now. Once again, your name, handle, and where people can find you outside of what it is. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve. Uh, you can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. And tonight I played 
Lamalfoon, Denali Elf Fizzard, who got to sneak aboard a monk boat and totally got caught on purpose to see what the navigator was up to. That was my plan. Yep. Calculated. Alright, from that calculation on to, the, on to my outro, which means I'm J3 Billion, otherwise known as John. That's a seamless segue, you see what I did there. Um, I have been our Eldritch Knight, who is now in a lot of danger. I could have sworn that I made sure all our bases were covered, vis a vis water breathing and or swimming. I can't believe I overlooked my homie Devok of all people. <laughs> uh, well, friends, we'll I am Birdie. We'll you, you know me on the internet as Birdie, and I am a failure. No. And Secret no. Pajad is a failure. You stop. Talking Makes about me my think that, like that Seeker doesn't like Duvok as much as like Scars. I mean that that that's accurate. Not true, actually. Not <laughs> <true>. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Next. Hi, friends. My name is Keens, and you can find me on the internet as it's me, Keens. Tonight, I played Sienna, the. <laughs> The poor, poor Hallowed Legionnaire, um, a construct of the soul, who is worshiping a blood god um, and is having some major second thoughts about that. Um, you can catch me here every Friday, and I will be back next Friday as well, playing the same game, same time. Hey, everybody, I am the Waterlog Yene. Oh, I almost knocked over my lamp. Uh, <laughs> You can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling because it me Am Changeling, and you can find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs. I'm Ambrose. I have played Yune, and I don't want to die. Well, hello all. I have been uh, Gar, and I am sort of Sully, and you can find me next time, sometime. But it has been a blast getting uh, my sea legs and giving an owl bear not so sea legs <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, now for our true fans we are going to vote our players we each nominate one other player but new to vocal tales I say new every week it's not new anymore we've been here for over a year you the audience can vote as well for your flavor player We'll tally the votes in chat after we sign off and award our players appropriately, which is advantage on one of their roles. So, please, players, take turns being excellent to one another. Well, since I'm joking, I'm just going to say Keems, because character, awesome development. Um, Birdie definitely deserves my vote for tonight. Um, yeah, so... Give mine to Birdie. There you go. You really do give it to me every week, you know? <laughs> I'm going to start I, getting flattered. Yeah. I, I what, what can I say? Like, I love the character. Is it, the character is so, like... Very, very, like... Very, very almost like... I know it. I know I'm that. No, I know I'm all that in a bag of chips. And... To, to like see you consistently put Lamalthun like speechless, make Lamalthun speechless <laughs> on a consistent basis is kind of great. I'm not gonna lie, Lamalthun is never speechless. You see, everybody, I learned fishing this week so I could get that compliment. But you get a hook, yeah. <laughs> this time, though, I'm giving it to you. You brought your Sayana all, and I was glad to see an, an elaboration on on those previous thoughts. Also, I like talking with you. It's very fun. Thank you. Um, definitely some honorable mentions. Uh, Yane is a sweet bean. Gar, thank you for bringing out that 100 acre owlbear today. That was horrible. Devok, I. <laughs> Poor Devok, who can't swim. Um, and Birdie, I really enjoyed the conversation we had as well with Sayana and Seeker. Tonight, though, I will be giving my vote to Lamalthun for just being an absolute shit kid and not giving a single fuck anywhere. No fucks to be found. So, 
tonight was really fun, you guys. And I'm going to throw it at Keems for some amazing character development. I I think that is the most insight I've gained into your character. And it was beautiful. Aww. I feel so hugged. Thank you, guys. Uh, I, I got to give it to you as honorable mention, Keems, because character growth is fantastic. But laying against the back of the door, you could use some help. Just laying on that schmarmy schmuck that Lamalthoon is <laughs> through and through. Yeah, you get it. I was so disappointed. I have a whole thing about if someone tries him and he does have to send someone to diss. I have stuff. I was very disappointed. Just for you. Use it. <clears throat> but yes, I agree. All those moments and more were top notch. Uh, I have been Patty Shakes underscore, and I encourage you to watch Vorpal Tales' other shows, which include, one moment, as I pull up our calendar on VorpalTales.com. BT Dubs, there's a new one popping up this Sunday, so it is, um, let me find the, the poster for it. Pan Pangea, I think? Okay. In uh, place of Fiasco. Okay. Uh, but we have things like, uh, wow, this, that calendar is very old. Okay. <laughs> uh, hold on. I can do this. I think I have, oh, oh it's my phone. All right. Uh, next week we have, uh, wait, is that right? We have Delta Green coming back on Mondays? It's been. Yeah, it's been. Has it? Okay. Oh, great. Okay. Excellent. All right. This is up to date then. Delta Green on Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Black, Vo Black Void on Tuesdays. Actung Cthulhu, it'll be our season finale on Wednesday. Thursday is Pathfinder. And then, once again, on Friday, same time, same place, is us, Draco Genesis, season two, Flight of Wednesday. Uh, but also beforehand, you can watch Call of Cthulhu. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow, I believe, is SCP, as well as the Homebrew 5e game, which takes place uh, in Runeterra, which for those of you who don't know, is the land that League of Legends is based on. And so if you're a Lily fan, come check out the game tomorrow, uh, 5e, and uh, get some fun out of that. Uh, all right. That's it. That's what I've got. We hope you enjoyed our story tonight. Look forward to seeing you in the future to continue this awesome tale. Until next time, may Corian light your way. Stay safe, stay awesome, stay adventurous, make good choices, and wear a mask.